We want to get into the class on the firstborn. We're dealing obviously with Abraham and Isaac. We're in Genesis chapter 17. And um, <clears throat> we're primarily tonight going to be dealing with, uh, well, we'll see, but primarily I think dealing with verses 17 through 18. But I want to start back to catch us up with verse 15. And as I read through that, <clears throat> I want to um, clue you to some words that uh, in some cases will be important tonight. In some cases will be important really uh, later on uh, as we proceed in this. So here we are. Genesis chapter 17, beginning with verse 15. <clears throat> And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarah thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sariah, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her. And I want you to take note of the word bless. And we did talk about it last time. But it's going to be important in the New Testament also. Uh, and its meaning. Okay, I, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed. And of course, the laugh part uh, we will talk about tonight. But we will also uh, address that um, chapter 18 coming up. We're getting real close. Um and laughed and said in his heart, said in his heart, shall a child be born? Okay, I just, I want you to consider where this must be going when Abraham's response to Sarah bringing forth a son by him, by Abraham, that he has a question, shall a child be born? No. God's going to bring forth his son. But this is his mentality. Unto, unto him that is a hundred years old, and keeping in mind that Abraham at this point is a hundred years old, and shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, this is what he says to God. Oh, that Ishmael might live before you, before thee. Oh, that Ishmael could live before you, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. I, I fear that really so much of the time we say things and we do things thinking that it's spiritual like he did, and um, and we we don't even know that it's really off. I mean, first of all, talking about a ch child being born, when in God's mind, um, it's more than that. And um, and of course, when Abraham's saying this, that last verse, verse eighteen, lets us know that the child that he's got his eye on is Ishmael. Okay. Um, and um, and then that that this may live before you. That this may live before you. Or without asking, you know, or, or requesting, Lord, that this may be pleasing in your eyes. Lord, I, in our hearts, I know this will please you. And we give him Ishmael. Not knowing that we're doing that. Not... Not tuned in because this is not about religion and this is not about uh, knowing the Bible and this is about it's not even about knowing God you know even in James he says well the devil believes there's a God and trembles and he's kind of rebuking us saying we don't even tremble um, and uh, uh, but it's about uh, tuning in to him 
and this whole this whole thing this whole thing I mean Genesis we we're we're seeing is really about the firstborn and the firstborn is in God's mind it's Jesus that's his firstborn son uh, and uh, in our zeal or in our ignorance or in our uh, even you know uh, best uh, interests of, of God we miss it because we're, we have conceived things in our mind you know like it says in Esther if it, if it please you like it says in Esther um, uh, that uh that I may find favor in your sight. Okay, so uh, I don't know. It's hard to break religious habits. It's hard to break, you know, um, you know, Father, bless our food, you know, to the nourishment of our body, which is, you know, just bear with me here. But I mean, the food's going to nourish your body anyway, unless you're really eating bad food. You know, we don't have to ask God to bless that, to nourish our bodies. We need to thank Him for that. Give us this day our daily bread. And our daily bread, folks, is the bread that was broken. And, you know, but if you want to make it practical, then do it from a thankful heart and do it with a little bit of creativity of, uh, thank you for giving us life and this food sustaining us. I mean, go somewhere at least that it has some validity. And But what I'm trying to get to is really just there's a person. There's a, there's a father in this story. And Abraham thinks that he's the father that it's all about. And so he talks like that. And he talks to the Father like that. And he and he he does he has no clue at this stage that Ishmael could never be what lives before him. Ishmael is what is consigned to the cross with Jesus into what will be put into death never to rise again. We either rise in that firstborn and the firstborn be the reason the, the reason for the resurrection and the resurrection and the life of resurrection for us. Or it's a bunch of Ishmaels because see it's no different in his mind. We say, oh Ishmael he's bad. Oh he's bad. Um we're, we're the same as Ishmael. We're not the seed. We're not the firstborn. I mean, you put any of it. Oh, that Randy may live before you. Oh, that I may live before you. All of our emphasis going down, down, down into the lower depths of the earth, as it were. Going down into the regions that his mind does not go, that his heart does not dwell going to places that we don't, if we don't understand it yet, then of course we pray that way. So what, what am I saying? What, it, what, do, what do I think these scriptures are saying? I think that they're saying that we need to tune in to Him. And if we tune in to, like Abraham here, if we tune in to the Him that's talking to Him, we'll find out that he's a father. And if we tune in to the father, we'll find out that he's a father because he has a son. And if we tune in to the father and his relationship with his son, we will see the, what's it called it in Colossians chapter 1? The son of the father's love the actual translation there in the first chapter. The Son of the Father's love. You know, 
And then it says, as you know, it says in Ephesians uh, chapter 1, along about verse 6, that we are accepted in the beloved, meaning the loved firstborn. The beloved. The loved firstborn. Um, not, not because we're doing everything right. Now, now, if you just took a quick run in your mind, um, maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do it next week. I don't know. At, at, like into uh, Hebrews or into uh, Romans 4, you would find that it's not by works, which would be Ishmael and anything he could do or us or anything because it's supposed to be of the Son in us. Uh, verse 16 said, And I will bless her and give thee a son. Hmm. Okay. I think I'll save that one. I think we'll talk about that a little more maybe next week. Lord willing. All right. So, um, Let me just read a little bit here. Abraham did not fall on his face because he felt deep honor for God's word. God, God has appeared to him. He's talking to him. He's relating to him that the time of life is close. And Abraham doesn't know which life it is. He's but God still, the Father, the Father um, is speaking in realms that we can't understand. But eventually, Abraham did, and it was his faith that became the picture of they that are Christ or Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And to have the faith of faithful Abraham and all the scriptures that say that. But right now, he's in a realm of his own world. He's in the realm of his own age and the age of his wife and, and the, um, uh, the situation that he's in and, and what he already possesses. Israel. Uh, what he wants, what he wants. God has spoken, uh, you know. Um, he's not, you know, he's not falling on his face this time. Excuse me, in reverence. Because the scripture says that he falls on his face and laughs. At God. At God's word. At God's word to him. Uh, does he understand the violation? No. Do we? No. I mean, just think how many times this could possibly be that in a day or certainly in a month, how many times we would actually violate certain things like that because we, maybe in church or theology, we hold these things as, as holy and precious. But when we get out in regular life, we're like Abraham. Well, my age, her age, the situation, what I have now, bless, you know, and, you know, let's not try to do something, you know, just sticking with our mind. And could it be that we would laugh at God? You know, so, and, and I, you know, I hope you understand my heart when I share these things. Um, you know, it's not about condemnation. I'm not trying to bring about condemnation. Um, conviction isn't bad, is it? Conviction. Um, but more important than all of those things and all the theological words we could throw at it and all of the justifications for preaching certain things we could say I in my heart with everything that I know and I know I know, don't know it all 
with everything that I know, want you to get the Lord. Believe that, I believe that God has drawn you here for these classes, drawn you to new creation, or drawn you to fire ministries, or uh, whatever else is going on that we, that it is the Lord. It isn't a message. It isn't good teaching. It isn't it's because it, if we get the message and we have good teaching and and we're never changed into that same image or and the see it's that image it's the firstborn it's Christ if we're never changed there if we're not brought into that heart we'll never know the Father's heart you can't know the, Jesus said it over and over only the Father knows the Son and the Son knows the Father. So John says, well, I, I write these things that we might have fellowship, and truly our fellowship is between the Father and His Son. He says that, and that, that's based on what Jesus said. John knows. John heard it first right out of Jesus' mouth as He walked the earth. And said, no man knoweth the Father but the Son, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Well, then what kind of relationship is he trying to get us to know if that's true? Because we know that there were at least 12 that walked around and knew Jesus of Nazareth. Um, but that's not knowing the Son by the Father. And that's not knowing the Father by a Son, the Son, a Son. A Son knows the Father. And... You know, First John, I mean, he, the same John that walked, one of the twelve, the youngest, he, he takes those things that he's heard and, and he speaks them in a little different way so that we would, so that we would get those things just reaches he reaches out of the book of Genesis and the whole Bible if you will and tries to reach into our heart to awaken us and he says beloved calls us beloved that's the firstborn so he better qualify quick or we're all going to think we're it Beloved, it doesn't appear yet what you shall be. But when he appears, you shall be like him. All right. So it's, it's, I believe, and I believe that's the whole purpose of the New Testament when it comes to the firstborn is to happen in this life. You know, that the, uh, that the sign of the covenant be in our flesh not in our faith or even in our walk because eventually this moves out of Abraham altogether. The sun swallows up the story after a while. So it's no longer about Abraham's faith. It's no longer about Abraham's walk. It's about the father getting his son. And I believe that Abraham, I believe with all my heart that Abraham got it and went, oh man, this is, this is it. And he bowed, he bowed to it. He didn't, you know, he didn't laugh at it because he laughed because he didn't understand. I believe, I believe that Abraham was, as it were, a special man in the sense that God chose him and in the sense that God kept working with him and everything. And he did become and understand all these things and more than we can imagine uh, eventually. But, um, but there's a process. And, um, and it's kind of good to see from the father of faith him laughing at God and realizing oh no what if we are doing stuff like that what if that's happening and Lord man can, can we just pray real quick over that father we just ask you that 
the Holy Spirit that you sent that will glorify Jesus to you will move in such a manner that if we have mocked or laughed or 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 um, countermanded what you are trying to communicate that you forgive us not just for forgiveness sake so that we don't stand before you with that sin on our conscience but forgive us and move in us in such a way that more and more we are in tune with the person, the person of the Father, the person of the Son, the person of the Holy Spirit. And it's every bit as real. Every bit as real as knowing other people. Father, thank you. Thank you that we could pray and ask these things because we don't want to violate you. We don't. We don't. And if you showed us how often we've done it, it would break our hearts. It'd probably just break our hearts. So we're afraid to see that. We just want you to move in a manner that we can be more in tune with your heart. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so, um, gosh, literally only read one sentence out of this. <clears throat> um, clearly, Abraham had become attached to Ishmael. All right, is it possible for us to become attached to our Ishmaels? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Our Ishmael can be um, the ministry that we've raised up for God. Our Ishmael can be the spirituality that we've built up in us that we have so much confidence in before God. Remember, like a few, <laughs> Romans 4, 3 and 4, and all that, that, there is no boasting not before God. Um, anything on that level and we can we can have confidence in it and we can believe in it um, clearly Abraham uh, had become attached to Ishmael not just as a firstborn but in a personal way as a father Abraham had become attached to Ishmael not just as a firstborn though that was included it had to be there if he's saying, oh, that Ishmael might, then he's, that's firstborn stuff. But the spirit and the place that he's coming from when he's standing up and trying to get Ishmael to be accepted by God is a heart of a father toward a son. And that's not the son. And you're not the father. You're not meant to be the father of that. Well, I did that. I fathered this. I built this. I created this. I, you know, I spent my life's work, you know, doing these things. You know, no, 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 no. We, we get uh, serious attachments to certain things. What I mean by that, why I use the word serious is because, um, uh, to, to attach to Ishmael as uh, the father that God wants him to be, that God just spoke about in the prior verses, is off. It's off base. It's taking, I, I don't know, maybe this doesn't ring to you, but it's like taking holy ground and using it for unholy things. That our heart will belong to Jesus. That our heart would belong to Jesus and would be His, His, 
our hearts would be His. And the Father would see that our heart is for His Son, Jesus. Not our Son. Or our fatherhood. Or whatever. Or our motherhood. I'm going to be a, a, a mother of a multitude. Or whatever. We need to give all that stuff up that we've we've come up with and we've made something and well God showed me that I was going to be well I gar I I'm sorry I guarantee if it's contrary to the life and nature of Christ and the relationship between him and the father and what the holy spirit is trying to establish in us then you better question if that was from God <laughs> It's okay the question. Oh, I, I don't want to give this up. Hi, Abraham, love and Ishmael. <laughs> Before you give it up, you have to question it. And you have to question it before God. And you have to be able to say, it's better than I to say this. If these things I, be uh, I believe that came from you aren't from you, and they don't coincide with how you see things. How you see, because I want to find favor in your sight. And I don't want to pray, I want, fa I want to find favor in your sight, and yet regularly ignore your, the way you see things by lifting up things that I've, you know, what do we call them, golden calves or whatever. I, I think Ishmael's a adequate. Um, it's just, you know, it sounds so easy or so small or so stupid just to say, let's just be found in him not having our own things we can boast in, which is how he began, Paul began that chapter in Philippians 2. Uh, God forbid that I glory. And he, he just, he, you know, talks about all the things that are religious things that were probably his Ishmael's. But then he just, he's just dedicated on just a few levels, you know, the power of your resurrection, not the, not resurrection power, the power of your resurrection, which we're in that resurrection, but he must become the resurrection for us and the life. The power of his resurrection. The fellowship. The fellowship of his suffering. Not his sufferings. Yes, there's suffering. You can't fellowship if there's not suffering. But if our full focus is so much on suffering, which is not right... But rather, in the sufferings then, if I'm going to have to go through this, I want a fellowship with you. Fellowship with Him. It's always with Him. It's always relational. It's always what He wants. What He wants. Fellowship. Togetherness. Um, being made conformable to His death. All right. Well, I mean, what if God just, you know, did a new handwriting on the wall, you know, like he did in Daniel to uh, Belshazzar, I think it was, that uh, he, he does a, a new handwriting on the wall. And he says, you know, woe unto you, I have found you, I've, I've weighed you in the balance and found you lacking. Here's where you've missed it. The power of his resurrection. <laughs> the fellowship with him and his sufferings, not yours. And being made conformable to his death. We'd say, well, what about my ministry? I mean, that's not going to make me a popular minister. Well, okay, well, there's maybe another. How many kids have you had? How many Ishmael <laughs> have you had? You know, that are springing up out of you that you didn't know that you'd given birth to. Um, again, this isn't about condemnation. I don't believe that, I don't believe the Bible school is about condemnation or the church. 
I believe that the hunger that's in people's hearts, your hearts, is for Jesus. And as his servant and as your servant, um, I, I must feed you the things that he, number one, tells me, number two, that will help, that will, you know, that will help. Help what? Help your heart reach the Jesus that you love in the manner that he wants to be found and in the manner that he wants to be fellowshiped with and in the manner of the cross that ends every other thing except the fullness of him towards the Father and the fullness of the Spirit towards the Son. It seems plain to me that Abraham thought the blessings found in the first several verses here pertain to Ishmael and caused him to laugh. His hope rested with Ishmael. For, and, and get this, why? Why did his hope rest with Ishmael? For it would be folly for him to think that Sarah had any hope of bearing a child. Okay, and to do away with a present, real-life son, Ishmael, while waiting for a son through a 90-year-old woman, was not just laughable, but must have seemed preposterous to Abraham, or may I say the word folly. Foolish. Foolishness of the cross. Foolishness of God's way of working. His mindset, his, his, his being, where his hands move. Not to the strong, not many noble, not many wise. but the folly of God at work. It, that's big. It's big in this story. It's big in Jacob's story. I mean, look look at him. Look at Ishmael and look at Jacob and tell me which one you would have picked. <laughs> you know, um, Jacob just messed everything up, was constantly putting himself in everything. How can this guy be the one? that God's going to use. Joseph, the youngest, the, the one who's having dreams, that's hacking off his brothers. Not too wise there, buddy boy. But this youngest, this foolish one, when I say youngest, before Benjamin, he's the one. He's the one. And every story. I mean, all, you just... You, Jonah and all, you know, just keep on going through the Bible and you'll find stories over and over and over, you know, of the folly of God that declare how he operates because his nature is built on it. All right. Um, based on that, let's see, maybe I should reread that one then. To do away with the present real life son meaning to do away with Ishmael, while waiting for a son through a 90-year-old woman was not just laughable, but must have seemed preposterous to Abraham. Based on that, Abraham makes his play for his choice in the matter. Oh, 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 God, that Ishmael may live before you. You know, you could be standing there watching, you go, oh, Abraham is so sincere. He's speaking from his heart. It said he was speaking from his heart. I don't know if you noticed that. Did you notice that? It said that he was speaking from his heart. And oh, look how longingly he requests that God let Ishmael live before him. That maybe God will answer this prayer because he's so 
sincere. He seems so broken. He seems whatever. Religious. So in such a spiritual air. Spiritual air. A spiritual air. A spiritual air is full of Christ. A spiritual air, I don't mean air, H-E-I-R, I mean this atmosphere of carrying ourselves in such a spiritual way, which we don't usually when we get home or go to work or whatever. It's just when we, we want to be received, be heard, or be accepted. You know, I mean, this this may sound dumb. One reason why I joke around so much is the honest truth. You know, one reason why I joke around so much is because sometimes people will hold you up as super spiritual if you let them. And I joke around and I say the dumbest stuff. I am I say the worst stuff. You know that. You know, it's a miracle you're still around, but you, you are. But I mean, I do. But I do that with purpose. I any time, particularly any time that I perceive that people might be trying to lift me up or something, I'll say something really stupid or dumb or, you know, whatever, off color even. That whatever I do, you know what I do, and I'll do it with purpose so that people go, well, you know, I'm not, you know. I see the vessel and I see the Lord and I'm not going to lift up that vessel because he's a mess. Praise God. Yeah, a mess. That's that's being nice. We're better off not trying to build this thing around our Ishmael image and and then use it. Oh, oh God, in our spiritual air, in our spiritual atmosphere you know I think God hears just as easily Lord forgive me I'm a mess I need you if you need to cry cry but don't think that crying is going to get you anywhere with God because it doesn't nowhere does it say if you'll cry a lot he'll 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 hear your prayer you know it's the heart man looks on the outward appearance and goes ooh I mean, I knew, I've known several people in my blah, 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 since I was in my early 20s um, that could pray. Oh my gosh, they could pray. And I mean, the way that they prayed was just like, wow, that is the best prayer. We always just pray these, da, 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 but that's the best prayer. And I, you know, in my early days, I'd just go, oh, you know, I want to be like that. You know, thank God I didn't go to God and say, I want to be like that. He said, okay, you sure? You know, because it's not, I'm sorry, but it's not, um, those things don't add anything to God. If we can pray and say and reach God's heart, great. Whether it sounds stupid or whether it sounds spiritual, it's not how it sounds or how the tenor of our voice, if we can shake it, you know, or, oh, and the Lord said, oh, you know. I don't know. I, I just believe, <laughs> you, you say, I think that he must think that God really is focused on his son. <laughs> well, that's exactly what I believe. I believe that if we all get focused there, then we'll see his face, the son's face, and we will be changed into that same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And, and, it, will, and it will be seen to not be of works, including special super spiritual prayers or, you know, shaking our hands when we're, or whatever. Um, we'll see... And it's the grace that God gave to Abraham when he gave him a son. Can't get any higher than that. I'm not even talking about salvation. I'm talking about just getting the son. God the Father gave us his son. And he's in our heart crying out of a father. And 
you know, I mean, it, it, it would be great if we're working on something, not, not necessarily in relationship to the church or anything like that. We're working on something. All of a sudden, you know, something comes within us and we just want to cry to the Father. You know, we just want to acknowledge the Father or worship Him, say things to Him. Even if it's a short conversation, if it's real, you're building something. You're building something. Uh, all right. When God told them that Sarah would have the son that that He promised, both laughed. Because in chapter eighteen, the next chapter, I think it's pretty quick in the first couple of verses. Uh, Sarah laughs too. Okay. Got a real happy family working here. So if you're so happy, Abraham, and Sarah, if you're so happy, then I'm going to give you more laughter. Ishmael, I mean Isaac, means laughter. So I'll just give you some more laughter. Laugh that off, the sun. Anyway, jumping ahead. Abraham... Uh, attitude towards Sarah in a manner speaking was similar. So Abraham's attitude towards Sarah and her condition was similar to the elder son, Abraham being the elder son, elder son's attitude towards the prodigal getting the ring and all that kind of stuff. Looking down on it saying, well, I probably got that written here. Um, uh, it, seemed, it seemed beyond imagination that such a person as this, who was clearly lacking, deficient, empty, useless toward that end, could bring forth the seed. Okay, well, we, we do that. We've done that. I think we've all done that at some juncture where we God just decides to use the foolish things and, and then we get upset with that. We go, why them? Man, I've served you. I have stayed. I have worked. I have done this and that and this. And he's going, you know, okay, goats go on this side. <laughs> you know, I mean, what if that's all that he said to you? Goats go on this side. And we're standing there, you know, looking at him over here, you know. He's looking for that lamb spirit. He's looking for his son. And Abraham doesn't have it right now. He's looking at her like, are you kidding me? Well, what about you, you old codger, 100 years old? You're, you know, you're still an old thing yourself, old dried up prune. But that's not the Spirit of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord is, I'm just telling you, buddy, this is the way it's going to be. You can laugh all you want. You know, that scripture says God is not mocked. Um, and He's we, we still mock Him. Because that doesn't mean He's not mocked by people. But He will, you know, we will eventually reap what we sow and what we're mocking. Anyway, let me try to finish this. And there it is. Whoops. Uh, Abraham laughed. Now who is mocking? Sadly, Abraham is content with Ishmael as the promised son from God. We are so blinded by our own achievements and perceptions. We are quick to add our blessing by anointing before the Lord the ones we choose instead of the son of his heart. And I, I'm just going to close with this a little bit. Why did Abraham laugh? It seems to me that he is more wrapped up with being a father and having a son than he is with God being a father and having the son of his choice. And that's what's going on. Abraham is so wrapped up in that he's going to be the father, a father, and, and he's going to have a son. And it's all about which choice that he wants for a son. And thank God, it, the whole picture is not about us having the son of our choice. It's about the father getting the son of his choice.
So we'll pray. Father, thank you. Always thank you. Always thankful. Always thankful. Thankful that you never give up trying to reach us. Thank you that you're faithful to try to knock down every idol, Dagon and all the other idols, make them fall down before the Ark of the Covenant, Christ. Thank you that you do that. Thank you that you are doing that. Thank you that your mercies are new every morning. Thank you that your compassions are not pointed toward just compassionately touching our of what we perceive as important. They're new every morning toward your Son and that if you will, we can wake up every morning and say, okay, I didn't do so good yesterday. But you said your mercies are new every morning, Father, and I want I want to enter into those. I don't want to I don't just want mercies to to stay saved, or I don't just want mercies to fix my Ishmael life. But I want to plug into the mercies of why they are new every morning because of your long suffering to get your son in us formed living and manifesting that nature that is Christ the Lamb thank you for who you are and the way that you are thank you in Jesus name Amen Blessed be the name of the Lord. So, I don't know about you, but I love the Lord. Yes, I do know about you. But I love the Lord and I want to, I just want to keep going. I want to be overshadowed and that it be Christ. Okay, so we don't have a class coming up next. So, um, that's, if, if you weren't here last night, Wednesday nights are the time when the, Kelly will have a class after mine on Wednesday nights. And uh, Thursday nights we just go with my class. So I love you guys. I uh, pray for you. I love the photos that I have. Uh, I love looking into your face and, and then looking into the face of the Lord for you. Um, and I love that even though, I do love this, even though this coronavirus has separated you so in my heart i feel so close to you i when i'm in the word i feel close to you because i'm i'm with the lord to draw out of him what he has for you and what he wants to feed you this day the daily bread that he has for you so be in prayer for one another bless you bye bye